as twilight approaches, these scents are just a kiss to a prelude to a vampire. Hi, I'm Gabby. Welcome back to another edition of The Fragrantition. We're here on my channel. I talk about scents, perfume, and if you, like me, feel that you are a vampire in this godforsaken world, and you wish to become the undead, you've clicked onto the right channel. So in today's edition, I am talking about perfumes that give a vibe to a true vampire, whatever that means to you, whether it's romantic, whether it's hardcore, stay tuned. So my first scent, I feel, gives a true, classic, vampire feel, gothic vampire feel. It is Tom Ford, Black Orchid. This scent is a True cacophony, a symphony of fantasy notes. And I've chosen this because of the fantasy notes. Vampires are a fantasy. Or are they not? On cue is my fellow vampire cat, Claude. Yes, he likes to nibble at my neck. If you have a feline friend that likes to nibble at your neck, then please press the like channel. What does Tom Ford Black Orchid say to you? It is this fantasy note of a white, of this truffle and orchid. It is so deep and dark, it is a vampire to a T. Well, I just remove one of Claude's hairs from me. He's smitten by me, or am I smitten by him? Can you hear him purring? So Tom Ford Black Orchid, definitely vampire feel. It is deep, dark, mysterious. Deep, dark and mysterious are going to be three words that I'm going to be saying throughout this entire video. Oh, the hairs. Does a vampire suffer with hair? What is a vampire? Comment down below what is a vampire to you. We are coming out of the summer season and we can now draw upon those nights where we can finally step into our coffin and we could be wearing Tom Ford Black Orchid. I just have a 30 mil. It's a scent not to wear on an everyday occasion. Some would have it as their signature scent. So be it. I say if you can wear it as a signature scent, you are a true, true vampire. Moving on. What one shall I talk about next? I am actually going to talk about, you know, you know me, Midnight Poison, 
definitely a unisex scent. All of these scents are completely unisex. Completely unisex. And I, well, all scent is unisex anyway, but these scents, any male, female, whichever, you could wear this. You could wear this. This is a niche rose, orange, patchouli, vanilla. It's Cinderella being bitten by a vampire at midnight. Truly, truly vampiric, gothic. The rose in this is very gothic, I would say. Some would say, though, it's not gothic enough for them. But I think you could rock this. The deep blue in this screams gothic. It screams. Mina, being bitten by a vampire. And you know what my favourite Dracula film is. I know some people would say that Christopher Lee is the best vampire. That's true. But I would also say that Frank Langella in the 1979 dramatisation with Laurence Olivier, Kate Nelligan, Donald Pleasance, Jan Francis, I think even Janine Davitsky's in it. Yeah, 1979. I didn't watch it then. I was too young, obviously. I was. I was only seven then. But later on when I watched it, my eyes were mesmerized. I could see Mina completely wearing this and smitten by Dracula. Now, a real, true, classic vampire scent is Fils de Joie by Serge Lutens. Not only is the jasmine in this completely dripping with sweet honey, but it's more than that. It's night blooming jasmine and the juice screams gothic vampire it screams come and bite me now if you imagine a love scene between dracula and their prey or a vampire and their prey this is it mm. do you remember that film twins of evil I imagine them wearing this, the Hammer Horror film. Yes, it's Night Blooming Jasmine. It's a bewitching scent. I was completely bewitched by this scent, and I've only used a tiny drop. This is so strong. It's in my top 10 strongest scents in my collection. That's how strong it is. Feast de Joie. The night blooming jasmine is euphoric, delirious. So delirious, it's like you've just swallowed a, an opium. And you're, not that I recommend doing it, but you're kissing and biting and taking drugs. Not that I recommend you do that, obviously. This is just using it as, oh, my hair there. Claude, what did you do? I'm just checking the mirror. Yes, you do still look fabulous. Self-care is self-worth. You will feel self-worthy wearing this. And believe you me, Dracula will come calling to your prey. Now, the next one might not be deemed as a vampiric scent, but it is brooding and mysterious, so it has to be in here. Sadly discontinued, Daily Noir by Givenchy. 
it's this mimosa rose iris and patchouli scent slightly melancholic i didn't know if it was meant to depict serial killer the dahlia noir killer let's face it on a brighter note we don't do serial killers we just do vampires so you've got nothing to worry about here but this is such a beautiful stunning fragrance when i wear this Richard's fangs, my husband's fangs, just come out to play. Believe you me, I've been bitten in places not known to man or beast when I've worn this. And actually, I've had quite a lot of compliments from this. So wear this after dark, if you dare. Believe, I believe me when I say that. It has this powdery feel with the iris. The rose is soft and delicate. And the mimosa gives it this dusty powderiness, which I love. So I think really it, is, it belongs in this top 10. Moving on to a rose oud scent. The best one in my opinion well i have two actually this is one of them juliet has a gun midnight oud completely vampiric it is yeah they say rose oud has had its day well dracula came back to life in AD 1972, with my favourite actress, Caroline Munro. She would be wearing this. Yes, she would. She brought Rose Oud back to life, if she was going to, in that film. Oh, yes. It is a classic Rose Oud scent. But it's more than that. It's for... I think it's for rose, it's for non rose oud lovers, especially non rose lovers. Because the rose in this is done so beautifully. And I have another scent by Juliet Has a Gun, Lady Vengeance. That's not worthy of the top 10 in here. This is. Lady Vengeance is softer. This is just not only tantalizing to the taste buds, it is nail biting as well. It's that kind of scent. Juliet has a gun, midnight oud, completely. Let's go to two lush scents now the first one is no surprise because it is probably well i do have another jasmine scent but these two jasmine scents profiles hits the spot for vampires for vampire lovers in all of us lush lust i as i said i've said this story before i became a vampire the night i saw my family several years ago that I hadn't seen in a long time for an intimate meal. And I wore about 10 sprays of this because I could, because I wanted to show them that the prowess, the prowess in me is still there. It's not all about just the makeup, the nails, the hair, the lashes, although these are my real lashes. They are just two coats of mascara. This, this makes your lashes curl. 
you don't need to curl your lashes. This is orgasmic, beautiful jasmine. Slightly medicinal jasmine, but jasmine nonetheless. And I absolutely adore it. So lust had to be on there. But the second one is death and decay. This is more about the lilies. This is more about laying Mina to rest. And on my top lip is absolutely Oh, oh, itching like anything. Well, at least it's this top lip and not, yeah. Oh, excuse me a moment. You know me. I like to do unedited Gabby. Actually, that said, is my lipstick now smudged? Oh, I'm fine. Embrace the flaws. Too much AI. Before AI, we had the classic Dracula films. So Mina would be laying to rest, wearing this scent. Just as she was becoming the undead. There is jasmine in this as well, but it's more lily and rose and the, the deathly florals. Well, rose isn't really a deathly floral. Lilies are. And it almost has this almond quality about it, which gives it a bit of sweetness. And I can just imagine, you know, oh, let's spray Mina with this. <laughs> I could just imagine it. It's just, well, everyone comes to pay their respects. And they see the visible marks on her neck. Yes, it's the leftovers of death and decay. Completely. I love this scent. Although the name is Death and Decay, it does mean new beginnings. So, hey, let's become part of the undead, Death and Decay. Moving on to one of my daughter Portia's scents that she loves. Black Perfecto by Gerlaine. This is a sweet, Cherry bomb, but it has licorice. It has so many layers to it. Licorice, leather, rose, bitter almond. Oh, yes, even smelling it, I don't have to spray this. And they reformulated this, I think. So these bottles I have are like pre-2020. I've kept hold of them. Because they are just, excuse me, will I adjust my attire? The bottle alone is vampire personified. But to me, this does not smell of like liquid cherry medicinal kind of that cherry. It's, it has a girlinade DNA. Ghislaine, well, I think before the last five years or so, I think their formulas were pretty top-notch. Not sure about now, but this is, this. I call this good girl gone bad, biker chick, vampire goth. It's that one of the, you know, the good girls, the 
popular girl. One of the pop the, the popular girls imagine, and one of them just goes slightly off piste. I would say this is well. This could be Courtney Cox from. I mean, she went completely off piste. Not Courtney Cox. Rose McGowan in Jawbreaker, or Winona Ryder in Heather's being bitten by a vampire, Black Perfecto, La Petite Trope Noir by Ghislaine. So, I think I have done them all. I have one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have two more left. This next one, you know, Opus 9 by Amawaj. And it's one of the bottles that I do keep the box because when you slide it open, it's just magnifique. And I absolutely adore it. It it was a blind buy, but it paid off big time. This is Jasmine, but with the animalic facets lying all underneath, trickling through. This is this is the vampire queen, I would say. It's strong as yes. It's all of these scents that I have in front of me perform pretty well. Maybe Death and Decay and is the only one that really doesn't perform as much as the others but this one opus nine it is it's a mesmerizing jasmine with these animalic facets lying all through it trickling down that just gives it such depth and complexity and smelling it it's not the same an hour later, and it's not the same again another hour later. It is, it's a vampire just claiming its victims over and over and over again, and you're enjoying it just on your own. You're your own little vampire giving your own little bites and sucks, if, if that makes sense. But this is just vampire personified. And I'm going to move on to the next one because the last one, which is vampire personified, is, yes, Tuberes Criminal by Serge Lutens. The number one, well, actually, Opus 9 is probably a tie with it. It's medicinal tuberose that is running on fire. And if tuberose could burn, well, we don't want vampires to burn, do we? But if a tuberose could burn, this would be it. With, again, animalic facets lying underneath it. You know, you just scratch that neck a little bit. Yes, the blood comes to the surface and you want to take a bite. This is it. Serge Lutens, Tuperez Criminel, off the scale, 10 out of 10 for longevity and projection. It's, it'll attract all the little bats. The bats will come flying towards you. Believe you me, 
oh yes, they will. So those were my top 10 cents at the moment. I have done kind of like vampire cents a few years back, but I thought I'd update it, give it a twist. Give it just a twist with that stake in the heart. No, no crucifixes. No garlic, definitely, although I do love garlic. And yes, what are your top 10? I'd love to hear them, love to see your comments, to see your support. If you love my look, please like the channel. If you love the video, please subscribe. And if you love just me even more, tune into my lives every Sunday at 7.30 in the evening. My content is every Wednesday and Saturday at 8 p.m. And you could probably hear a siren then because they've come to take me away now. Till next time. If you were going to wear one perfume for the rest of your life, what would that perfume be?